to just. Uh, but are we allowed to mention some of the the designs? The Ghana, the Ghana, the Ghana designs. Oh, why not? If okay. you have somebody you want to, yeah, I mean, so, so, so in the spirit of making sure everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's actually he sells suits as well. Okay. He's one of the best, and mm. he does the kaftans. Mm. His uh, Instagram is uh, Das Slayers Taylor. Das Slayers. Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, All right. You're an excellent okay. guy. He's, okay. He's doing very okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's like, we'll send you an invoice as well as uh, <laughs> the next one. Uh, your constituency is which one? I come from two constituencies. Very good. I come from privilege. Menchia North. Menchia North. I was born in Bokrom. Mm, okay, Bokrom. And then I come from also uh, Bekwai. Bekwai. Because my mother is from Kukufu. Bekwai. Right, right. Yeah. So if you should uh, well, decide to go to an MPP primary, it would definitely have to be no, Bekwai actually, constituency. Actually, I don't or? have any interest in becoming an MP as it stands now. It's, it's, it's not something that I'm very... No, I'm not saying the next one. Well, no, no, no. In the I've next, been in this job for a long okay. time. Okay, well, MP is... So, some... you, so your original constituencies are Bekwai and then Minshanov. I'm not Minshanov. saying that you want to okay, go for okay, okay. No ice on you. You're cool. <laughs> You're cool. <laughs> and then um, we have former chair for the PNT, Bernard Mona. Good morning to you, sir. Morning. Great, great. I love your short answer. And uh, then Edu Jitamaklo. Godwin, Edu Jitamaklo is a legal practitioner. He you is um, with... Talk. <laughs> it's okay. You let you don't want me to talk. <laughs> the man says that he's a designer. The cost is less, but that is relative, because your poverty level compared to his riches will be different. So what is moderate for him certainly is expensive for you. Do you want to tell? You want me to tell you how much I paid for it? It's no, okay. It's okay. No, it's okay. It's okay. I just, I just made maybe a comment. Your, I, I'm, your, told, your, I'm told to make the Maybe your barrette will told, actually be more expensive than my captain. Okay. I'm told to make my comments short today. Even before <laughs> the show could start, <laughs> I was cautioned, so I'm being short. Your special mm -hmm. barrette will be more expensive. <laughs> uh, I, want, I, I want viewers to know that you said I should keep my comments. You Sure. Eduji Tamaklo is a legal practitioner. He's a member of the NDC's legal team. And thank you, Eduji. I think you're headed to court after this. Yes, yes. Okay, and, great. Uh, okay. Roland, um, mm. you know, you have this um, chap in um, who he used to be a former youth organizer, Adam Wisdom in Kono. Okay. He listens to you religiously. Oh, Mr. Nkono, thank and, you for always uh, watching and us. And he says today you'll be late for work because of you. Thank you very much. Please so, make sure you stick and stay. <laughs> we'll have some but, uh, good times and good things. Um, birthday wishes. My original youth organizer mm -hmm. for Greater Accra, okay. Amos, today happens to be his birthday. And um, a good friend of mine, um, Abdul Hamid, a very prolific writer, smart young chap, mm. um, today happens to be their birthday. So I wish them well. Great. Great. Ron, you Thank see, you. I'm very surprised uh, Adiji <laughs> didn't mention the youth organizer at the Swami constituency. Uh, who is that? I'm sure you've seen the video where the young gentleman is making some extremely reckless statements. And I think I wanted to rehash what he said, but upon yeah. second thought, I, I, it's so bad that okay. I wouldn't want to. You want to paraphrase it? Uh, mention it. But essentially, he's calling for extreme violence uh, that's for, for, the, for, for our next elections. No, that's and You see, what worries me is that... I haven't seen the video. Though. Okay, I can send it to you. I don't think it's I, even I, I worthy of... I have not seen it, but I've just seen uh, that there is the police looking for him. Mm. Yeah. I've not seen the video. Yeah. Yeah. Any talk of violence is condemnable. But you see, I say people take inspiration from the actions of others. Oh, but I go for no why, why inspired have you, this young okay, man. It's okay. With, why, why it's okay. It's died? okay. Why, why, why have you? No, so hijack, no, hijack. No, 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 gentlemen, let's not stand. It's too early in the morning. But I think that you need a spirit of violence to win an election. This is a man who is second chance. No, 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 no. But the death of eight Ghanaians who were slaughtered by the state. How dare you talk about violence? You know what the young gentleman said? Please. You, you paraphrase said, him. said the same oh, thing. Oh, oh, that did that. No, no, no. Oh, no. Please, please, please. Don't start the program like this. No, no. So Any morning. Let him Any morning. Oh, no, no. no. He what? says a youth Adiji. organizer. Withdraw what? He's a youth organizer of what? He's a youth organizer no, of the, the Swami Constitution. And I'm saying that. NDC. And what he said. He made a statement. And I'm saying that. Akufado is a Akufado is a condemn him. Condemn Akufado for the order of the United States. That. Roland, let me tell you. Do you know what the young gentleman said that is extremely dangerous? That Akufado has not said, said. 
he and takes, not done. He takes inspiration from, from the new leaders. From Akufuado. He actually said, he said, he takes inspiration that from, from Akufuado. From Akufuado. Si, si he from it is He said it. Mm. I even said we shouldn't. How do you, you, how you condemn person. what you have not ah, even seen? And Akufuado and Ketia has actually said. If he said, said that, it is condemnable. Maybe you should play it. I thought it was. No, we cannot play that. No, no, no. I mean, this is long. What are you talking about? Then play Akufuado. You should be ashamed to call such. Akufuado. How can you. You like should be ashamed of Akufuado for his order be that statement. All right, all right, An elderly man. Gu guys, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You have okay. nothing to lose. A truce, a truce, a truce, a truce, a truce. I'm okay. not going it's to okay. sit here and um, allow you to pontificate. What righteousness. Are you when you have no one and never Akufuado. I have Kofi no and Edugi. A man who killed Kofi and Edugi is too early for you in 2020. Just two years ago, you are a lawyer. You are a lawyer. Kofi and Edugi. You are a lawyer. Kofi and Edu a lawyer. Kofi and Edu yeah. And I have Please to state here it. and now. Okay. Any statement from the mouth of any politician, whether it's the f uh, president who said all oh, die be die, a current youth leader who says that violence should be exercised in the if next election, crying, whatever, it is what condemnable. And I think that it is right for everybody to be on that same tangent. It is condemnable. And then also calls that those eight lives that were lost in the last election, we should have those investigations concluded and any culprits apprehended and prosecuted is also well uh, informed and adhered to. Kofi, I take your statement. And now, uh, can we get on to the mainstream? Because it looks like uh, you're in oh, for some better, please. LDG is just doing that guy. Oh, okay. uh, do we have the insert yes. of the finance minister? The finance guy, minister yes. did meet the individual bondholders who apparently were picketing, uh, all part of including pensioners, etc. Because they had decided not to accept the new terms he had brought forward by way of the bonds they were holding in exchange for a new one because they were arguing the rate at which they were having the current bonds were better off than the new ones that he was proposing. Let's get that inset, and then we'll come back to the discussion table. I'll start with Kofi, what his reaction to the finance minister is. Really, I mean, I was um, uh, intending on having a statement to the nation, you know, uh, which we will do. Uh, but given that you had come here, I thought I should really come and meet with you and really understand what it is we are trying to do and where we are uh, in the economy. And I think we should get, you know, something really very clear for me. I mean, a nation must look after its destitute or widows or orphans or retirees. Okay. So we, we came up with, um, with a bond program um, and we're supposed to close this uh, maybe on um, um, in December, and we moved it. So we've moved it um, about four times, and really this is it. The challenge that we have, as you all know, is that we need by the end of March or middle March to have concluded of our IMF program. This is an important part of that program for us, the debt exchange. And then we had um, various issues, you know, we have um, therefore in this period engaged the banks and financial institutions. And I think we've come a long way. Uh, we expect a full tendering um, tomorrow. Uh, when now, Kofi, if you look at summation of the sentiment on social media, mainstream media, even on WhatsApp discussion platforms, it looks like the finance minister's response to these individual bondholders and groupings of pensioners who have bonds, who are unwilling to exchange for the new ones he's proposed, um, they seem to condemn his proposition and his comments. Okay. Um, what's the resounding response on the corridors of government? Well, I think, first of all, I've always said and I've always sympathized with uh, the individual bondholders and other people who've been affected uh, by this unfortunate circumstance. I've actually taken a stance not to even debate the issues, because I feel like the more you debate the issues, the more you infuriate people. The bottom line is that we are currently in a space where people's finances are affected. 
I mean, as we were watching uh, from Johnny's Bite, the lady who was speaking, enumerating uh, the reasons why they will invest in a bond vis-a-vis -vis their lives and, and the things that are important to them so as to ensure that they depend on themselves and, then, and, and not on the government. It, it goes to show how sensitive this issue is. There are people whose livelihood depend on this. This is a matter of life and death for a lot of people. There are people who need this money to buy medication. There are people who need this money to pay for school fees and other forms of investment for their awards and stuff. So it is a, it's an extremely sensitive issue that I've refused to politicize, to go into the nitty gritties vis-a-vis -vis to justify what the government is doing that is right or what is not right. I don't want to do that. I simply want to sympathize with the people so as to ensure that we do the right thing as a government to bring relief to the people. I think, fortunately, we've made some headway in as far as the bank, uh, Ghana Bankers Association, Ghana Insurance Association, we've made some headway with the pension uh, aspect of it. I think we are now left with the individual bondholders. Government has proposed two options. One being that uh, those who are under those who are under 59 years will get 10% uh, and then also a maximum of five years. And then those who are below, I mean, those who are above 59 will get 15% and a maximum of five years. But it looks like some people are still not entirely satisfied with the current uh, uh, proposition of government. So I think government needs to further engage. Uh, we have our last, today actually is the last day, I believe. So government needs to further engage so to ensure that uh, we do what will bring great relief to, to, to the individual bondholders. The lady, as she was speaking, mm. and rightfully so, mm. was speaking about the number of people mm. who are individual bondholders mm. who are below 59 and those mm. above 59. Mm. And she intimated that mm. they aren't that many. Mm. And when I was watching the video, I could see the finance minister nodding his head. Uh, goes to show that there may be some truth to what the lady is saying. If there is, and the government can go back and re-engineer the numbers. Because remember, we have a process of getting to 55% of our debt ratio. So if we can go back and, and, and recalculate the numbers uh, so as to ensure that we get to what the individual bondholders are saying and still get to the 55%, I think that would be very helpful. Um, even if it means, and I'm saying this as an individual, even if it means we have to inch it to maybe 56, 57 percent to ensure that we cater for the individual bondholders. I think that's a compromise the government should be able to reach. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what I would say on this. I okay. wouldn't want to get into the politics of it. I, mm -hmm. I, at this point, I don't I don't think it's, it's necessary to do that. I think I've loved uh, I've loved Kofi Tonto's response on this. Yeah. Um, if he has this response to make, why is it that the finance minister doesn't seem to reflect that same, uh, Mr. Bernard Bonner? <clears throat> Good morning to you, Kofi and Ed Gigi. Um, I came here feeling very sad, virtually broken of the disaster that happened in Turkey. Mm. But glancing through your short uh, headlines, mm. I'm getting confirmation from Hataya Sports mm. that he's been found and removed. Okay. Thank God. And um, it makes my soul um, come together. But whilst I was looking at that, I noticed that your technical men also brought a red um, material and tied on the a red band. Mm. Band. So and I the just crane. and then I it's called crane. Mm. Okay. Or uh, jeep ample. Jeep ample. I think that is more sexy. Mm. <laughs> that one of our cameramen mm. has passed on Francis Butchie. I wish his family strength. Oh. And that of TV3, the courage and capacity to be able to withstand the loss and probably to give him a befitting barrier. Mm. Because these technical men actually do a lot of work. They mostly are under so much stress. Yeah. They have to come very early. 
sometimes sleepy, is trying to set up. Nobody gets to see them, but they are actually the machine that does all the work that we are. We, we are seen, but they do all the work. Mm. I sympathize with him mm. and to all of you who are here. Mm. Um, maybe, maybe so that we can all associate yeah, with yeah, yeah. Um, this statement. Mm. Um, yes, I, yes, yes. yes, I had a very close uh, relationship with Francis. Um, each time I'm here, any time I'm done and I'm going, he will carry my staffs with me. And um, reading from other sources, um, Stephen Anti and Co. have paid um, quite a uh, uh, Fallon and Co. have indicated the enormous work, the level of professionalism that he brought on board and the quality of work. And, you know, because he was handling the long the, camera, the, the, the like they always say, mm. um, uh, you could see the exceptional talent that he came with. And he's extremely serviceable, a very good person and so when on Friday I saw the post. The, the post on Johnny Hughes I was so devastated because I think I had met him less than two weeks yeah the last time we came here, yes so he accompanied he us mm -hmm. yeah he okay. accompanied us to oh. the back so Friday when yes 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 he's always yeah, 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 yeah. yeah so when I heard of his um, demise I was totally devastated oh, wow. but um, like they say it's God that gives it is him that takes okay. so um, my condolence to the wife the two kids and um, the family okay. and TB3. Right. Uh, if I may say a word, um, I, I recall seeing him, yeah, yes, I yes. think, was it last Monday we came here? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. last Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, so I joined my brothers in expressing our deepest condolences to the family mm -hmm. in the TB3 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. family, his mm -hmm. immediate family. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have a personal relationship with him, but the several times that I've been here, I saw him. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember his face now, now that you are saying it. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> Bernard, so my question. The finance minister and what is being espoused by him, and then uh, what Kofi also is saying, it seems to be at variance, right? Yeah, obviously. It uh, hasn't sound too entertaining. I, I think that President Akufado is simply not listening. And that is a very troubling signal for our economy. What do you mean by not listening? I have said time without number, and many people have said so, that a finance minister who has lost favor with citizens, no matter what his good intentions will be, citizens don't trust him. To continue to maintain him as finance minister, you will suffer so many rejections of the policies and programs that the finance ministry is bringing out. To the extent that even if the programs were intended to bring reprieve to the economy, we will not accept it because simply Ken Oforata mm -hmm. is unfit for purpose as a minister for finance. He could be fit for purpose for other things, but not as minister for finance. If you listen to Ken Oforata as of yesterday and you were not cringing, then there is something wrong with you. Ken Ofurata suddenly believes in the efficacy of an IMF bailout. Hmm. Ken Ofurata, he has suddenly lost the pride that he carried along when people told him that you needed to, look, subordinate your ego, reduce your level of pomposity, get to the fan early. Ken Ofurata went round at the Tamale Sports Stadium, Ali Umama Sports Stadium, telling people that we are a proud nation and that we are the shining star of Africa and no matter what anybody says, we will not go to the IMF. Well, perhaps maybe he was seeing figures differently. Can I? He? Today, you have no morals to even apologize that you got things wrong. You somersault, boom, 360, and then turn around to say that, look, IMF bailout is the solution. In doing the IMF bailout, you don't have the decency to engage. You go out there 
think and then impose. When people now tell you that, no, your imposition will not find space, then you now come in to tell us that, look, um, in fact, what he said was the most annoying, that, look, we need to get an IMF bailout by March, otherwise the economy will crash. Well, that, well, that is true. We need the bailout. <laughs> Mr. Muna, don't you think we need a bailout? I don't think so. If you listen to the bondholders, right from Hosi to Pebu, and you listen to the various proposals they have made, why is the finance minister not listening? Why is the finance minister not listening to the bondholders' proposal to overcoming the current debt hiatus that we find ourselves in? Which are what? One, reduce your expenditure. You came and told us that to reduce expenditure, you change vehicle numbers from black to green. That's what he told us. Sure, and, that means that, and that means that we are no more going to buy fuel when they are green. Or we'll stop workshops being organized outside. Are the workshops not still being organized? Is the Ministry of Finance not still taking workshops outside of the, the ministry to hotels? Are they not being organized? <clears throat> so you see, the man doesn't even believe in the things he himself says. He says that we'll stop seeing V8 moving in town. Every day you hear, wing, 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 led by dispatch riders. So nothing of the policy proposal that the finance minister has put across is practicable. And so if I listen yesterday, and it is with pain that I say this, because look, individuals who decided to invest that getting to the end of the year and the beginning of the following year, they will be able to take their money, pay their war school fees. Today, majority of the awards have been turned out from schools. The private schools had to come out to start to complain that, look, most parents have withdrawn their kids from the private schools, ostensibly because their bonds have been held up and they are not able to get money to pay. I listened to the, 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 the president of the private schools. He said that, no, that is not the option. Probably we should see, parents should see how they can negotiate with the schools on how they will be able to settle in bits. But redrawing them will also mean that it will impact even on the education of these kids. All these things are happening, and you have a minister for finance who just work luxuriously to come and say that, are you saying that the finance minister is not realizing the... Uh, he, he doesn't. Has, he he does. has espoused uh, in many forums or fora that he empathizes with the states of, of the bondholder. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. You mean by his action? By his action, by his pronouncement, the, his, 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 his demeanor even before appearing before these people. Tells you that, no, we are going to do it. We have to reach our deal by March. Um, uh, 15th, middle of March, if we don't reach a deal, the economy will crash. And so take it. <laughs> that is the import. Take it, because we have to reach a deal. You owe me. You are not giving me conditions. You are not listening to me as to what I think should happen. It is not right. You can't mess people's life. And, you know, when I say this, Anytime finance minister speaks, it rather sense it's like you've added petrol to an inflaming inferno. So it will just be boom, 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 boom like that. Anytime he speaks of recent, people get angry and agitated. Particularly if you take the COVID-19 report that have come, that enterprise insurance that he belongs to can take in excess of $12 million and say that they are going to do um, um, what we call it. Um, 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 uh, uh, national, uh, what do they call it? Insurance for frontline health workers. And no single certificate has been issued. No person has been identified as a beneficiary of it. So people know how this finance minister's talking trade is to milk the nation for his personal good against the majority of the people of Ghana. So when that person continues to be in office and is seen to be talking to people, to tighten their belts, to, to, to go through austerity, 
you think that it will work. President Akufado must come out of his slumber and realize that the earlier he acts on the Minister for Finance, the better it will save this nation from further destruction. Well, Edwiji, <coughs> the finance minister has reiterated the position <coughs> in which we're in, even though he does realize his initial reaction to going to the IMF was that looking at, well, all the projections from what would have come from the tax handle, e-levy, et cetera, we didn't need to go, et cetera. But it, it, it looks like he's now telling us he needs a lot of um, support and empathy from us so that we can all move together, get this approval from the IMF board. And so this very um, sharp position, very steep position on the other side, whether the bondholders or the others of political divide or academia is not, is not good for the country. And that's why he's saying that, look, we need this or the economy will be in trouble. And that's the reality, is that not it? Okay, so Roland, I think that we need to begin to speak truth to Mr. Kufuado and his family. That one, they cannot take us for granted. Two, the president must begin to show and demonstrate respect, even if for the other political divide, even for the people who killed, to give him the mandate to become president of this country. What do you mean by that? You see, his total lack of respect for the concerns of Ghanaian is demonstrable. Look, what is it about Ken Oforiata that Mr. Akufuado cannot let go of him? What is he sitting on? Hmm? What exactly is Ken Oforiata sitting on that Mr. Akufuado can simply not ask him that, hey, your incompetence has destroyed this beautiful country. Your incompetence has destroyed the livelihoods of people. So step aside. At this point, I am confident that if you should ask my brother Kufitonto here to manage this economy, at least his body language will be refreshing. Not the arrogant posturing of the finance minister. Look, this is a finance minister that right from the beginning, the signs were on the wall. People in academia, civil society, persons associated even with the NDC kept saying that, Mr. Finance Minister, the way you are going with this economy, this is the final destination. They brush it off. Very arrogant posturing. I recall a time when Gabi even said to Bryce Simon, that you are talking about 85 years experience of people and you are comparing it to Bryce Simon. At that time, people saw certain development. And you see, like I always say, economics is about numbers. So once you, and you see, mathematics is more precise than emotional matters, right? So once you begin to see your debt to GDP ratio, your borrowing ratio going on a certain tangent, you can see the final destination repeatedly. You let's even put aside Honorable Atu Faustin, Isaac Adongo, H. John Dramani Mahama, the 90 something MPP MPs who, knowing who Akufuado is, the level of victimization that he can victimize them in their parliamentary primaries took the risk to come out openly to say, Mr. President, enough of this, your family member. Let him go. He's even destroying the brand of the MPP for well, us. Well, he didn't say family member. They just said that they seem to think that he's locked confident with the ranking family. Obviously, you deny that he's not a family member. Is that your denier? Mm. But you see, I don't know. <laughs> no, it says family member. I mean, to yeah, so I just stated a fact, and you are, you know. You are uh, making an interpretation of the reasons why uh, the are MPP. Are you saying that he's not a family he member? He is a family member, so but I'm, I'm, I'm saying that the reasons adduced by 
the majority members of parliament in excess of 98 mm. were not because he's so a you have MPs one hand, said that he had lost have, favor have, with the you rank have, of you have, yeah, even 98 you have yes in fact you yeah, and there were more who were afraid so the, decided not to put their name there ultimately they all came and said they, they one, support that 137 or 38 MPs about 90 something of them took the risk to say that Mr President ask your family member to step aside the president ignored them. Look, like I always say, if you have a situation where our finance minister was directly benefiting from the unbridled borrowing, and remember that the reason why we are here today is the unbridled borrowing. Nothing more, nothing else. How, how do you mean that he benefited? It's a company. You're talking about Data Bank. And yes. He, he's, 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 he hadn't been in, 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 in the management no. of, of Data No. Bank. He's the beneficial owner. In mm. fact, and you see... Because of his shareholdership. And the shareholdership. So you know what he did? Before he left in 2015 on the board of uh, Data Bank, he quickly set up a trust company that he and the wife and family are... 100% shareholder, and transfer the shares to this trust company. So as I speak to you, if the trust that is holding his shares in the data bank, enterprise, whatever, for him. So any persuade they make from our borrowing campaign, Eurobond campaign, he benefit direct, in fact, he's the ultimate beneficiary. The report shows that he's made over 158 million Ghana cities. This is a president who has said that he is not going to appoint anybody into his government who is going to make money. And that if you want to make money, private sector is your place to be. Today, people desirous of having a better life, planned their life, decided to save into government instruments because of the traditional notion that government instruments were almost, what, risk-free. Today, for the first time, do you know that yesterday, we needed 4 billion Ghana cities to pay. 4.1. 4.1 billion Ghana cities to pay for our debt, the, the, the bonds. We could not get the money. We could not. We have defaulted. And this is not the first time we are defaulted. In December... There were a lot of uh, bonds that were due to be paid. We could not get money to pay. But I need you to be realistic. The, 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 based on the regulations and the laws, the government still has uh, some 40 more days to do that. So no, but it's not about the... the of course, the, there's a default the, exactly, of a day. the man had we're, defaulted. We're counting the days. As I speak to you... Please wrap up. Yes. As I speak to you, we are defaulting on major Chinese money. For instance, Sino-Hydro. You know, Dr. Baumia came parroting that... He had brought innovation and that the Sino Hydro deal was going to be battered trade. You recall, and that we use our bauxite, turn it to ingot, get money, establish an escrow account, and use that money to service the Sino Hydro money. As I speak to you, not even one ounce of bauxite have we processed for the people. So, do you know that the Sino Hydro money? today had become part of our public debt, that we need to go and look for money to pay the Chinese. As I speak to you, the report is showing that the Chinese insurance company, Sinoshop, is already withdrawing the insurance policy. So pretty soon, all the projects that are being financed with the Sino Hydro money are going to stop. The president today is begging Germany to beg the Chinese to agree to restructure our debt. How did we get here, Mr. Kufado? The most reckless president that I've ever seen, accompanied with his talking vice president. What do you mean by reckless? Extremely reckless because, you see, let me give you a classic example. Of the 11 billion borrowed from Eurobond, what at all can you today point at and say that out of this 11 billion, 
We have made this investment, and this investment has the capacity oh, to repay free itself. SHS, we have one district. Do you know that as I speak to you? Uh, Edugy, let me hold on, no, no, so that he comes no, in. No, no. Free SHS. I give you thirty seconds. Edugy, yeah, thirty you know. seconds. Yeah. Free SHS is being financed with our petrol. Yes, I know. It's not borrowed ABFA. money, so you cannot bring ABFA, the issue yes, of your bond. Two. First of all, one district, know. one factory is being financed yes, yes, solely. One, I mean, one district, one factory. Save it for the next one. It's being financed solely. Coffee, coffee. From coffee, the Ghana is in bank. Co coffee critically. So what is it? Coffee critically. Um, there seems to be a certain communication coming from the finance minister okay. that we need this to get the board approval. Yeah. The finance minister looks like uh, a person within the institution who seems to have lost stakeholder trust. And so his ability to be able to persuade or convince the various stakeholders <clears throat> seems to be not coming forth or lacking. What well, is government doing about it? I, I wouldn't entirely agree with it because we've made... You don't think it's lost stakeholder trust? I wouldn't entirely because we've actually reached agreement with some stakeholders, the Ghana Bond, uh, Banks Association, the Ghana Insurance Association, and other stakeholders. We are now at a stage where we need to reach an agreement with the individual bondholders. I mean, you would agree with me that we've made some progress as far as stakeholder engagement is concerned. So I wouldn't entirely say that he's lost confidence with all stakeholders. You wouldn't say that? I wouldn't say that because the facts do not support that. I've given you the facts that we've made some progress. As it stands now, we are left with the individual bondholders who are yet to come on board. The issue is that the arrangement that have been made for them is not sufficient. Uh, for example, the, the, the five-year maximum with 10%, the five-year with the 15% is not sufficient. That is what is being looked at, to, re to, to be re-engineered again to ensure that we bring them on board. So I think we've made some progress as far as stakeholder engagement is concerned. Edugi um, made some... Uh, commentary. Uh, my senior brother Bernard made some com commentary as well. This morning you played a video mm. and it was a video of the finance minister standing next to an individual bond holder. Right? I think was it Johnny's Bite that played the yeah, video? Yes, a video we played. And yeah. the lady was raising concerns as far as bond, as a bond holder. Mm. Right next to the finance minister. So it cannot be said mm. That the finance minister standing next to a bondholder, mm. obviously looking like they just came out of a meeting to do a joint press conference. It cannot be said that the finance minister is not listening. That is being uh, alluded here on this platform. It cannot be said. Mm. Uh, because there, are, there is evidence that you, you have to have listened to have agreed or to have reached <coughs> some engagement. There is more to be done, certainly. And I, I've already said it here. And even me having this discussion is uncomfortable for me. But sometimes you have to put out the facts. It's uncomfortable for me because I wouldn't want to debate this issue. What, it, what is said. uncomfortable for No, me. I'm saying that I wouldn't want to debate this issue as I am being forced to sort of clarify certain things, mm. as, as my brothers have mm. put here. Mm. But I have to clarify it for factual purposes. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't have done that mm. because for me, the most pressing thing is that mm -hmm. how do we recalculate the numbers mm. to make sure we bring the individual bondholders on board at a very satisfactory level? Because these are lives at, at stake, and we can't joke with it. And mm. that, for me, is the most important you thing. Do you think the finance minister is listening to what the bondholders are I've, I've given you instances that shows that he's listening. Sure. I've even Ooh. pointed to you that mm. he, was just listen he was just from a meeting with them where they did a joint press conference where the lady was, quote-unquote, making commentary against the position of government, right next to the finance minister. So if he isn't engaging them, if he isn't listening, how will that happen? Now, is that enough? Clearly, it isn't enough. And that is why, at least, my hope is that today, there will be some consensus. And I've already said... Is that it a if, hope or this is a certainty you've gotten the, the, from the, the corridors Something has to happen... happen to, Today, because today is the deadline. Isn't today the seventh? Today is the deadline. Something has to happen today. And that's why I said, even if it means inching up from the 55% to up to 60%, so as to make room for them, why not? 
Because that will still be significantly lower than the 93% that we currently are. I so I am saying that let's make some concessions. Let's make some compromises to bring the individual bondholders on board. The, the lady attributed that they aren't that many. And if they aren't, I think as a government, we can make some accommodations to make sure that we cater for them. That for me is the most important thing. And, and, and to ensure that ultimately we are able to move on to the next level, get the executive IMF board a, a, approval so we can make uh, the progress that we all is it uh, is it a chorus or perhaps a certain optimism on the corridors of government that yeah. we'll be able to meet that uh, before the the time the time is today mm. so we have to meet okay. it today uh, please do you have that finance minister's video okay so the finance minister just after uh, those uh, spring meetings in washington yeah. spoke to papuasi asari I was very optimistic the deadlines or the timelines that we'll be able to get uh, a board approval. I'll, I'll play that before uh, I get on to um, Bernard Mona. Just uh, take a watch. Market. Uh, so really, in my mind, uh, there's no need for speculation as to where the currency should be. It's, it's, should it's, there's back. real speculation yeah. back home. And yeah. I, I can understand that's what prompted you to issue that statement Yes. Um, what we intended to do is to get as close to a staff level agreement as possible so that we can incorporate all of our decisions, uh, most of them into the budget, so there will be no reversal. And therefore, by year end, hopefully the board will approve. You see that happening? Yeah. We have to make it happen. The fund is very motivated. We are 24-7. We'll stay a few more days after um, this annual meetings and ensure that, you know, we make, you know, solid progress going so spring meetings, and this was in Washington, yeah. our own Pakwisi was there. What made the finance minister so optimistic at the time, I think it was back in, before the budget was read, see, that, that, that he thought that by year's end, that would be December 2022, that he would have gotten a board agreement? You see, uh, the yeah. executive board agreement. Yes. Uh, okay. That's what he said. Okay, I, I, my brother was should engaging I, should me. I, should I say he was engaging me, so I didn't Listen hear that side it. of okay. it. But, I think we've made significant progress. Remember, no, we, we, made progress. we we, see, we're we achieved to him. we achieved the staff level agreement under the six months uh, requirement. Sure. But you see, here is the it's thing. a board. No, I know. Uh. Here is my thing. As a finance minister, you have to engender optimism as much as possible. Do you think he did, or he does? No. He did. Whether it materializes is a different argument. But I'm saying that as a finance minister, as a president, as government officials, we have to, as much as possible, do our best to engender confidence. It doesn't necessarily mean you may achieve everything 100%. But if you don't engender confidence, sometimes your negative comments can have dire consequences on the economy. Imagine the finance minister saying that we can never uh, reach uh, an, uh, an agreement with IMF. That can immediately impact the economy. It was not for him, or because even academics across the country were telling him. No, I, I, I know. I am saying that when it comes to management of an economy, mm -hmm. the commentary of people like the finance minister, the president, can have immediate consequences on the economy. So you I ought agree. to speak with optimism. So as to ensure that the economy doesn't crumble. Yeah. It is, you see, when you are managing an economy, the word is managing. You manage emotions, you manage feelings, and that's why some, my brother was even raising concerns about listening. It's not just the numbers. Yeah. It's about listening. It's about emotions. Yeah. So sometimes you have to do that to manage the emotions and all of that for the economy. Bernard, yeah. do you think that if we had changed the finance minister by June, July, August, um, we would have been where we are still, or we would have been better off. If anybody is closer to President Akufado and is watching this morning's show, I would think that Kofi Toto would be a better replacement no, for you. the Minister How of How did Finance. you come by that I beg you, please. I beg you. This morning, his demeanor, his communication tact is so excellent that it has not injured anybody's reputation. I've said it earlier. It has not. And so if you have, if you have somebody like him replacing 
the finance I, I, minister. I, I, I Can I please. talk, yes. please? Yes. Ah, when you were talking, I was just. But you know, Akufo Addo will not consider. No, so oh, don't please, 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 please. Yeah. Yeah. I was just admiring you, and oh, I, 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 I had feeling that look, this is somebody. You are saying that his communication was way better than what the, the finance minister always. Super. Was. Admitting that look, we are in this together. Mm -hmm. I cannot even talk about the situation that bondholders are going to. Is it different from what the finance minister said? Ah, the arrogance. Oh, wow. The man talks softly. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> that is why I was wondering why Kofi decided to wear white white this morning. Oh, oh please. Because the man wear white white, talks softly, and yet he's doing criminal things. Oh, please. Come on, please. You, can't, you can't use that word. What do you mean by he's doing criminal things? This is you, not appropriate. You, you use enterprise insurance? Go and take our money and say that you are giving frontline workers insurance and no single certificate is issued, no beneficiary is identified. We will pay 10 million Ghana cities. What premium. are you talking about? Premium. But enterprise what insurance, are you talking about? Enterprise insurance is, is an insurance company operating under the incorporated laws. <laughs> of and, and, and the Minister for Finance decided to give them money. And didn't give to the state insurance company. Well, they also part. If you look at the breakdown, I can mm. give you the cover. Please, report. please. It's here. Uh, can I make my submission? Please if, go if ahead. You, you, you have to. So, it. so obviously, I see a better finance minister, a finance minister that people will be willing to listen to. In my brother sitting here, than Ken Oforata. Second, listen to the finance minister. We will go to any extent by the close of year. We will get board approval. We are almost in March. You think he was too confident? Which one is too confident? Which one is too confident? The man simply did not know which direction he was leading. <laughs> because he went there, didn't know. This was the same meeting that Kwesi Kwatin, that finance minister, sat and conferred with. He was at the meeting. He was not allowed to complete the IMF meeting, board meetings. He was sacked. He was called back home because his policy, he did not do anything. No. His, uh, his companies or associated companies did not benefit from the treasury. But just because he put up policy packages that were not acceptable to the people of Britain, he was recalled and asked to step down. And he stepped down. President Akufado still allows Ken Oforata to tell us that they were going to stay a few more days, and they stayed for a week. They came back with zero package, wasted our money, still incurring more debt. This IMF whole thing, sometimes you look at it, you are now seeking an IMF bailout to inject confidence in the investor community. That's one. Two, that in itself is going to add to the, your debt stock because you are going to borrow money. They are not going to give you for free. So, look, I just don't know what to say again because it appears that President Akufado is always excited to see the people of Ghana crying, woi, 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 things are not going well for us. Anytime we do that, then he sit down and laugh, ha, 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 ha. Otherwise, Ken Oforata cannot continue to run us into these many problems when Kufo, uh, President Akufado still allows him as Minister for Finance. Mm. You see, well, we have uh, to go for a break, yeah. Oh, so we're going so that... Well, I just mm. wanted to give you only two minutes. So okay, like. so on the two minutes, mm. my brother Kofi makes the point mm. that, okay, um, the banks and this have... in response to the video. Yes, and yes. The banks, yes, the banks have accepted and others. First of all, the bank owners in this country are aware of the vicious nature of our finance minister. So there's a certain level of regulatory victimization that even bank owners are afraid to stand up. Who told you that? Yes. How, Look, did, how did you see, come by that see, conclusion? See, you see. How did you, how did you come by you that see, conclusion? As we speak, you the know the owners. Honorable Muhammad Yariga mm. has taken issues with some of these issues. And they are using guts for some of these operations. Uh, the amalgamated trust. Trust. Look, a lot of things are going on. But you see, even more importantly, is the, is the question that the bank owners know when what has happened previously to some bank owners do not want to fall victim to the tricks of Ken. And that is why initial opposition and the kind of engagement they basically called is coercion. It's coercion. Because everybody knows that bank owners are interested in profit. 
But they have overexposed themselves, 33% to government bonds. The biggest people to suffer are bank owners. It's going to affect their investment income. It's going to affect their profit margin. Almost everything. They are not happy. But you dare not oppose Ken Oforiata on this matter. But more importantly, Ken Oforiata today is saying that Ghanaians should pay for his recklessness, for his incompetence. You are the most resourced finance minister since 1992. And you have run the economy at ground. Now you need people savings, life savings. People have planned their life. That look, on retirement, the small money from the bonds, they'll be using it to buy diabetes drugs. But Kofi has acknowledged. No, it's not a matter of Kofi. Kofi, he's he just a, 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 a messenger. Oh, what do you mean by that? Kofi is a messenger. Look, in the past, mm. person like Kofi could have had his head taken off if he was sent to another king to deliver the kind of message he's delivering. People's livelihood. I'm telling you. Look, somebody, and, and you know the painful part. Pensioners, for the first time, are having to go and demonstrate. Have you seen that before? Pensioners. What it means is that these are persons beyond the age of 60. And you are telling them that in 10 years' time, they can get the benefit from their investment. So he's adding 10 years to 60, 70 years' time. Effectively, you are killing them. You are signing their death warrant. How did we get here? Kofi, how did we get here? You have so much, plenty. Now, you brought us to this. At least the Bible says to whom much is given, much is expected. Mm. When you go Legon Hall, in front of Legon Hall, that's the motto. That to whom much I mean is... Hall, like Ufado was a member. Possibly he didn't by learn that by one. Duty. But it's also, it's, it's also true that for all the investments that have been made mm. in... Uh, one D one F, and it also means that we also have to empathize. Do you know to, to whom much is given, much is. Expected. Do you know that the the investment? Forward, yes, the investment in one D one F came from the Ghana Exim Bank. What has that got to do with the borrowing? Oh, but, Please, but all of it. No. <laughs> do you know that any time you bring a product to, into uh, the country, uh, you pay a certain uh, amount but of I, money. I, 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 just, I, ju I just want to apprise. Uh, yeah, it's to do of, of, of the bank ex exposure. So we're talking about IHS market is uh, a subsidy of Standard & Poor's. By June, they had uh, made this publication. And this is widely known in our financial academic uh, circles. Now, um, commercial bank, and I've shown this many times, was... About 48%. Was, hmm. was, 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 was exposed close to 50% yeah. to government instruments. 48%. And you can see... So, Top 10 banks exposure to government securities, that's the percentage of their assets. And we're talking about what's on their books. So it's an asset on their books, but in reality, now it looks like because of the current structure we have, they're highly. Echo Bank, close to 40%. APSA, close to 40%. This is not us saying. It's Standard & Poor's Fidelity. subsidiary. We have Standard Bank. Fidelity see bank, the that are closer to you. most exposed <laughs> see the local bank, bank close to 60%. This is by June. These are and the uh, standard chartered bank, just they in excess of 40%. Cow Bank is lot. there. Cow Bank, over 50%. Zenith Bank, Ghana, over 50%. Access Bank, over 50%. ADB, Bobo, ADB is, is there as well. Now, let me just give you a structure of the debt as we have. It has increased. But you'd also know by now, we have 575 billion. Kofi, last week in his argument, that says that when well, we have the new rates coming from the bank of an issue change. So we'll bring you that, that um, before. The, so, so, so we have, who holds Ghana's domestic debt? This is what it is. Insurance companies are having this. Then we have companies, 0 0.9. Rural banks. They are also, so if you know that you are in Fanchinico or in Quanta North or somewhere and you have a rural bank there, they are also in trouble. Uh, pension funds, Bank of Ghana, foreign investors, then we have others there. So the main ones are the Social Security and National Insurance Trust, commercial banks, 33%. So the bank exposures, so if you save with any bank, etc. You should know that those banks own their books. Their assets are exposed to the tune of 33%.
Then we have these individuals, firms, etc. Hmm. There's 25%. And now that the, is where the real thing is. They're 33%. Uh, uh, the, you are the not the one who okay. said okay. 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 this thing, please. You, why are you so... <laughs> yeah. I'm doing why, that why because... Now, why before we go for the job. break, <laughs> it also means that there's a certain <laughs> cycle. When you speak to the finance people, they'll tell you, these individuals, they take their money to the banks as exactly. deposits. They have all these apps on their phones that tells them they can invest. For example, Stanchard will say invest. So you, you buy the securities, you, you buy bonds, you buy uh, treasury bills, etc. And they're supposed to be the safest. Now, what they are telling us is that it's, it's a cycle. It's these individuals who have their monies there, the companies, etc. No one makes profits and puts the money in an account. You have to invest it. And that's why they're raising concerns. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll also uh, give you a certain perspective on the next issue, which is about the minister emphasizing the need for IMF bailout to prevent a possible crash and what we need to do to make sure everybody comes on board. Make sure you stick and stay. Don't go anywhere at all. Promises to be nice. Bernard Mona says that he'll be short in his responses. Well, let's try and see whether we can wrap up in the next 10 minutes. But Kofi, yeah. how do we get everybody on board? This entrenched positions won't take us anywhere. It won't. And, and that's why I think uh, uh, my senior lawyer... <laughs> Uh, Martin Pebu uh, needs to uh, calm down a bit and, and to help with the process. As I've already alluded to, um, the reality of it is not something we can debate. People's lives are affected. But really, what are the options? <clears throat> the options are you stay out and we all go down together or you stay in and at least you protect your investment. These are the options. So I would respectfully encourage the individual bondholders mm. to come on board so we can all protect the little we have left. Otherwise, we are going to lose everything. You know? mm. So um, let's, let's ensure that we have a, a path forward. Mm. Let's ensure that we bring the economy back on the, on the right track. But as I've said, as bondholders are taking a hit, as a government, we also have to take some hit. And that's why I keep lamenting on the fact that if we can make a reasonable adjustment from the 55% to maybe 56 or 57 to ensure we bring them on board at a reasonable coupon rate, mm -hmm. at a reasonable time, why not? You know, so that we can get them on board. Because if they don't come on board, we will all be in a mess together. Mm. So that's my humble request to the individual bondholders, that we plead on them to come on board so that at least by tonight, we can have an agreement and move forward to the executive level. Mm. Hopefully, by March or so, we should get the executive level agreement and be able to, to go forward. Once the IMF gives us the executive agreement, uh, you see that confidence will come back immediately. Because there are people outside who are waiting for that to happen. Don't also forget that IMF is helping us fend off our liabilities outside. What we are discussing is our liabilities internally. IMF is helping us to fend off liabilities outside. If we are able to do that, it is even possible that government may come back and reasonably renegotiate again. Because we will have the room, the, finance, the fiscal space to be able to do certain things mm, again. Mm. The IMF has said that they are engaging our bilaterals, they are engaging the people on the capital market to see how we can you know, either reduce uh, for them to give off some of the debt or yeah. even cancel some of the debt in totality. But it's incumbent on us achieving the domestic debt exchange program as we are doing that because that one has not materialized yet. We need this to materialize for us to move to the next level. Mm. So we sincerely plead on the individual bondholders, mm. Senor Hossi, uh, Martin Pebu, and the other leaders to, 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 to reason with government to come on board so we can get the nation. The, the, there's a lingering here. question, and I'm just looking at um, the proposal from the individual bondholders yeah. who had said that <clears throat> based on their propositions, government could make a win for cut expenditure by some 54 billion. Um, 
do you think that government has met them halfway? No, be because you see, cutting expenditure, mm. and I, I think last week we discussed it. They mentioned goods and services, and then they mentioned another one. I forgot what they mentioned. And we even came it's a to... suspension of some key programs. Yes, some, some key, key programs. Some key interventions. Um, you see, when you are managing an economy, you need to manage the overall effect on the economy mm -hmm. and the people. Mm. Yes, and I even said and considered here that in the goods and services, we can make some maneuverings to cut down. And government has already made that effort with the discretionary, 30% discretionary yeah. cuts. Mm. Maybe we can look at where else we can cut. But don't forget, this is a country where uh, almost 40% of our expenditure goes to 600,000 people. You mean you, the public sector? The right? public sector, the excess, public wage bill. In excess of Yes. Mm. So when you say cut 50%, you may very well be saying that let's take somebody's paycheck away. You know, so let's be mindful. So uh, to ensure that we keep the very things that keep body and soul together for the economy. Because the economy needs to run. Where we can make some concessions in the goods and services bit, I think we have to do it. And government needs to show more commitment to the individual bondholders that you are also taking a sacrifice. For them, I think that is something they want to see. That fine, we may be ready to concede to come on board. But show us that you are ready to make some sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And if we can, we must also show them that we are ready to make some sacrifices, especially in the goods and services space, where uh, there is, there may be some space for us to play with. We, we should be able to do uh, that. Bernard, why do I get the feeling that the way um, Kofi communicates, that should have been the communication coming from the finance minister, that I'm willing to do this? Because if you take a look at the proposal, and I'm looking at it here, um, 54 billion, um, they are saying key interventions, let's say we stop some funding of some key intervention programs, we we make um, some big sacrifices on some expenditure, collapse some um, MDAs that have been created within the period. They are still creating some. All of a sudden, there was a board for the National Ambulance Service, another structure to ensure that people are able to get money from the state. National Ambulance Service does not need a board. They are under the Ministry of uh, Health. And therefore, the Ministry of Health and its transport department should be able to handle issues relating to the National Ambulance Service. But no, is there an act can I, governing them? No, it just can I, can I make my point? Okay, sorry, sorry. To go ahead and establish, if there was an act as you want me to believe, that act was there and then we decided not to implement it because of the um, logistical and the non-availability of funds. All of a sudden, in the midst of this crisis, you want to activate an act that has not been implemented for a very long time. Seriously speaking, it appears that President Akufa and the Minister for Finance does not know that, look, creating some of these outlets is also a way of ensuring that the public debt continues to balance. President Akufa has taken luxury in increasing the number of judges at the APS court. Do you know what it takes to maintain one judge? And so when you continue to increase the numbers of judges at the APS court, then what it means is that you are increasing your burden to maintain them. And the judges retire on their incomes. So at the end of the day, even when they are on retirement, you still have to be paying them. So some of these things are things that you need to take deliberate steps to say, look, let me put a cap here. No one should even inform you that these things are eating deep into. And so the individual bondholders, have made proposals on areas that government can cut without necessarily making their lives worse off. Already, everything in this country is going up. Electricity, water, cumulatively is about 35%. School fees have gone up. Students were up in arms crying. Mobile telephone. Mobile telephone. So. Many, everything, fuel prices continue to hit the, the, the roof. Um, farming inputs have also become a difficulty for many people to go back to their farms. So everything is on the high. At the time that things are going on the high, you are there telling me that, look, sacrifice your, your money, that you don't even, you cannot even go and buy food. You cannot pay your students, to his, your, your, your well, kids. Well, government says it's sacrificing. Sacrificing for what? Where can, has Ken Oferata sacrificed what? And so I keep insisting that, look, 
the person can overata is actually the problem. And if you had put in some other person there, <clears throat> this situation that we find ourselves will not even arise. People will be able to talk out the situation. Look, I feel very, very sad that we sit here and you are calling on Martin Pebu, you are calling on the Hosi uh, Senyo yeah. to, 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 to do what? Oh, but I they should go and die. Oh. We sit here, teachers that were recruited in 2022, a whole year they have not been paid. And they are up in crying. You recruit somebody, give the person an appointment. Then you want the person to go and impact knowledge. The man is hungry. He goes to start in the classroom. How? How? How do you expect the person to teach? And so they are hungry. And that the situation is not peculiar to only the teachers. So I, I, I just feel that, I just feel that, look, we are in a mess and Akufado must rise. Okay. I simply believe mm -hmm. that if you continue to listen to Kofi Tonto, you will see a better finance minister. Unfortunately, this morning, he has started wearing white, white. <laughs> You see, you see, Ed, 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 the sum, the, the sum of the agreement. For example, Seb Watin says that can we, as a people, come together and say we are in a crisis, and so agree with government so that we go together. Who, who, who? Uh, uh, this Oseb Watin. You see, Ose, there was a scenario in the UK when after Second World War. The people the hold on. The people, the people, the people notice that the monies were we expended in the war effort. Mm. So when government brought the issue of debt restructuring, mm. the people out of patriotism could associate with that particular agenda. This one, the people are seeing a government that is feeding fat on their, you know, what tax. Do you mean, what do you mean by their feeding fat? See. A simple, where we are, no, hold so on. we need to make In 2022, for instance, 20, uh, 2021, sorry, mm. government of Ghana went to parliament through the chief of staff's uh, office to justify the 2022 budget for the office of the president. Do, do you know, no, no, oh, hold on. Do you know that? Th that line has been peddling oh, for a long time. Can don't I, go can there. You let me finish don't so you can then. Tangent. Do you know that they actually spent... 148 million Ghana cities on what they called operational enhancement costs. Roland, what in the management of the presidency amount to operational enhancement costs? Nobody had told us. So if Ghanaians become aware that you are spending this kind of money in the office of the president, when people become aware that you have food in your mouth, but you are telling them to tighten their belt or to fast. How can they see honesty from you? So the question that Ghanaians are asking is that you have not demonstrated prudence as a government. You have not demonstrated that you want to carry the people along. And so we should let the economy crash? Now the claim that the economy will crash is complete falsehood. I will demonstrate to you. As we speak, are we still taking COVID levy? One percent. Because we need the revenue. No, no. That's exactly. Yeah. Are we still taking VATs? Why are you simplifying the? Are we taking ESLA? Why do you want to complex it? Are we taking ESLA? Because yeah, we are. Which of the tax handle that this government takes have they stopped? What has that? We are taking do? everything. We are taking. But Roland, but, oh, but, but, oh, but, 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 but stop it, Don't even constitute. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. But we also do agree. No, 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 what what we collect, ninety percent of what we collect, approximately, goes to pay wages. Yes. And then offset some. The last wage bill, even for whatever it's worth, was thirty-three billion. The last time I checked, government made over seventy-five billion. All the thing Kenoforiata is talking about yeah, IMF. But, 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 Hold but, but, on, the IMF three billion. Mm. How much is it in CD terms? But we, are, we have other expenditures, for example. Exactly. So the point I'm making. So the point I'm making is that uh, the statutory payment is twenty. MMDAs no, the statutory payment even though, even though we're lagging behind. Billion, you know? Twenty-eight billion. Mm. So plus or so minus. So point is what? The point I'm making is that all government revenue streams are, are still on board, but you see, Ken is playing an emotional game. The emotional keyboard. How did you come by people. that conclusion? Yes, yeah, the conclusion is simple. 
as we speak, right, we have a situation where we are still taking all our, these taxes that I've just mentioned to you. Some of these tax handles have already been mortgaged to pay certain loans. For instance, ESLA, Get Fund, among oh other things. God. So if you have all these things in place... Do you really want Edigen. to talk oh, about ESLA? You, you, you cannot count. Edigen. You cannot really count. To talk about ESLA? We're See. taking all these taxes and we're using them for Platinum. salaries... 33 and billion. Forget about all that. No, no, 33 billion. Forget about the quantum of the expense. 33 billion, that's the, that's the reality. Billion. What we're taking now, mm -hmm. we're even not, we're barely breaking even. No. And then, and then mm -hmm. we have the liabilities we have. Yeah, the we, interest we have. payment and exactly. amortization. So at the end of the day, the reality is that mm -hmm. we don't have any space left. We, ah, we, so you no, mean no, Kenu no, no. does not have space? How much was am I, am I supposed to, to the office to that? of the president? So, so the question I'm asking you is, is it not true mm -hmm. that we all need to come to the table and say, if we don't take steps, we will crash this economy? Not in the manner Keno Foriata is proposing. And you see, what he's basically doing, which is a mind game, nobody seated there wants this economy to crash. Mm. So that if it now requires that myself, you, and others must sacrifice, to keep the economy afloat, we are most likely going to do that. But, now, can't you return the, but, but you see, the, the, the but the reality is that that is not the situation. They didn't insure anybody. That is not the situation. You are saying that they are not sacrificed. They are not. And he is playing. What, what do you want to see Everything. again? Everything. Workshops, workshops the 10 are not being. Plus to 12 million that Ken Oforeata released to enterprise insurance. And nobody he should, was, return, he should, he should return such monies. That's, so that that's, we can that's, that's on the, the other note. Yeah, but so, the point so that I'm we making can get to is know that, that he's willing. We can only can do this debt restructuring. He released for enterprise insurance for the The people who have destroyed the economy, first of all, demonstrate you are not the ability to take responsibility for the mess that we are not seeing. Two, Roland, may I ask you this? And maybe Kofi, as we speak. Do you want to ask me a question? The chair of the economic <laughs> management team. <laughs> The chairman of the economic management team, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, what is his take on the current state of the economy? I'll tell you his take. And Can I tell you his take? Because in all of this, he's not talking. Can I tell you his take? As the chair of the economic mismanagement team, we are not hearing from him. The president is asking Germany to help talk to China to help us restructure our debt. Why not send? Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya to do that negotiation for us. More importantly, as we speak, we need some very urgent funds, in excess of five billion, to pay some creditors. What is the way forward in getting the money to pay these creditors? Bloomberg is already telling us that Bank of Ghana is saying that all the overdraft that they've given to government of Ghana, they want to turn it into bonds. I hope you've read the story on Bloomberg. How did we get all this toxic mixture of corruption, incompetence, reckless mismanagement of the economy? How did we get here? Especially so, the people who in opposition said, we have the men. How curious is it that, as at 2021, Kenneth Furiata was telling us, that we can develop this economy without an IMF program. The same man today is saying that without an IMF program, the economy will crash. How did we get this incons inconsistent bunch of people to handle the affairs of this beautiful country at this crucial moment? It's sad, my pain, everything associated with pensioners. Do you know that today, diesel and petrol are basically selling above 15, uh, 15 Ghana City per liter. That was the price of the entire gallon in 2016. When Mr. Kufado promised that he was going to move the economy from Gorgisberg economy to whatever. That is the scorecard. If you have this child in school and he presents this scorecard or terminal report, what would you do? It's unfortunate that this is where we have brought this economy, where today, pensioners, my problem really is pensioners, our mothers, our fathers, who are on pension, they have planned their life 
Bakken of Uriata, Nanado Danque Kufado, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia have decided Edith. to destroy Edith. their livelihood. I am so sad this morning. I am so, so, so sad. And when these people with genuine consent exempt us from this debt restructuring program, Ken Oferiata says, okay. if you don't, the economy will crash. Right. I want to say, and I want to submit, that it's an emotional blackmail. That cannot be the case. He can still exempt them and still have a program with the IMF. All right. Um, your last word before I go. Oh, just, I, uh, I, in a minute, just wrap up for Yeah, me. I think I've already mentioned uh, what needs to be said. Uh, and I'll simply reiterate what I said, that we all have to come on board and ensure that uh, we, we get this program forward mm. so we can get the economy back on track. Mm. I am extremely tempted to take Eduji on when it comes to some of the things he said, you know, talking about Esla and all of these things. But I'll leave it for another day. Today, I want to <laughs> leave it on a positive note that what is most important is that we get some agreement this evening so we can make a, a forward movement. Okay. And then at the right time, we can address some of the lies that he continues to perpetuate. It is almost like he's written it in, in his notebook. Who? Eduji. So any topic you bring up, he meander his way in a circuitous manner and gets back to the same and he starts his talking the points. Take to the he starts his talking points false? about this and that and when and send me bree. But we'll address that Which at the appropriate I've right. told you. The one ones one about one. the uh, parliament and uh, uh, Jubilee House and all of it. These are all coffee, coffee, coffee and for me. Coffee now, let, let me just... No, it's okay, sir. Let me just... Uh, 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 my no, 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 no. We'll finish. Oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no. no. Let, let, let me just acknowledge no, no. certain people on the no, streams. No, no, no. Prince no. Anani Salasi, good morning to you. Agudu Suleimana. It's not right. And then also Kofi Avukbe Ejakwesi Kanga. Good morning to you as well. Um Obi Menu And then Kingston. Uh, Asimega. Uh, now let me Rula take a couple of the comments as well. Yeah. I have this one from Great Meg. Great Meg uh, has uh, comment for us this morning. And, and Great Meg says, um, Ghana is really gone. The Bible admonishes us to honor our fathers and mothers, which is a commandment with a promise. And that's for Great Meg. And then we also you have see, from Aziz see, Dollar. See, let me just see. read this one. No. Uh, uh, Adam no. Swale Tamale. Uh, he no. says, the current no, economic no. brouhaha no. is no. global. Even countries like the United Kingdom, France, United States of America, and many more are going through the difficulties. The posture of Eduji, <laughs> Mona, are all going to be the basis for making NDC rot in opposition. Adam wrong? Swale, Tamil, I shouldn't read it. No, he, he, Next one. <laughs> now we have this one from Giddy, Giddy from Pando. Nothing is free under this insensitive Ekufuado and Boromia government. They deceive Ghanaians to believe that their words are going to school free or their words are going to school free, but they had a hidden agenda to mismanage the economy and use their monies invested with them, via bonds and others, for their domestic debt exchange. Okay, next one. This government borrowed and used it to organize Kinke Party without <laughs> inviting Ghanaians to the table. <laughs> now that the debt is here, to pay, you are asking people to sacrifice. Justice from Iwaso West Wogo. Shame to them. Why didn't you add that one? Uh, shame to them. Mm. Well, it's on the screen. It can be read. You, you think it's deliberate that I missed it? <laughs> you deliberate it. Some of these things. It's okay, it's okay. Vincent, respectfully, can you compare salaries and benefits of ordinary public sector workers and Article 71 office holders on the public pairs? Oh, a couple of the. Oh, that's the last one. We have many others. Bro, it's bro, only that's, these that's that, that we can bro, accommodate. Bro, bro. So that, I've, that, had, I, I've had Roland, here Roland, Kofi that's Tonto. That's Kofi Tonto Roland, is a lead communicator Roland, for Roland, government, the government uh, of Nanado Nanko And then document. Bernard Mona is a no, former chair. It's a former chair of the PNC. And then Godwin Aduji Tabaklo is a legal practitioner. Now, please share with me. You have Share with me, Aduji. Now, let me tell you. Oh, this one. This one is paid for. It, this one is paid no, for. I'm just no, 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 no. Why did you stop paid. this thing, la? Oh. Yeah, we should stop. <laughs> can, I, can I read an LPM? No, this one is paid. They paid for no, no interjection. Please. My claim is not true. So I'm giving you the document. 
Operational yeah. enhancement to, to keep oh, send it to me. Send it to me. Send it to me. Now to keep the body in good health <laughs> is a duty. Therefore, having a health insurance policy is also a must. Now, no matter the budget, there should be a policy tailored to suit you. And that is where ACE Medical Insurance comes in. So be it a family or corporate entity, there is a package for you. ACE Insurance offers full coverage plans with over 600 service providers nationwide to ensure you have seamless access to health care. At ACE, they believe everybody deserves a chance to live a healthy life. We are just a call away the same. Make sure you visit their website and just again at www.acemediinsurance.com or you can also call them via the number 055-677-68903. Let me take that number again. 055-677-8903 or 055-257-1275 for inquiries. Ace Medical Insurance. The new phase of health financing. Benabona, what do you say? President Akufuado. Oh, without we're taking, shame. Uh, that, that's it. We're, we're going for a break. When we come back, we have more conversations for you. You also know that we went to the United States of America, California. And we had Bella Mundi there hey, with our lead. I saw, I saw Bella. You saw Bella in I California. Bella. That's yeah, your home. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, Kofi Tonto is a U.S. man, so he knows all about the, the state. At the Grammys, yeah, right? Yeah. The Africa branch of the Grammys. You know, having all those good and, and times. I was put together by my sister Denta. Great, great, great. Denta, Denta, you're doing great work. And Bella Mundi as well as uh, Daniel Oklu. Danny, play the video. Who was with her? Well, give us the latest as well as the latest sports we have right here on TV3 New Day. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. <laughs>